welcome to Sport Calgary's Faces of Calgary Sport. I'm Katrina LeMay Doan, President and CEO of Sport Calgary. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. It's a beautiful day outside. I know many people um, registered might be out participating in the beautiful day. Uh, but those of you who have joined us, thank you so much. Uh, today we're talking biking. And um, we have two panelists who are going to help us uh, talk about the sport, talk about options uh, for yourself, your family, uh, maybe explain <laughs> a few things as well. So first, uh, what I always want to do is go through um, people who registered and um, just see who has any experience. Uh, we ask everybody, you know, have you heard of the sport, seen pictures, but know nothing about the sport? And that's about uh, almost 35% of the people. I've watched videos of the sport, TV or online, about 23%. Um, just over 40% have tried out the sport or actively take part in the sport. So that's who we have registered uh, with us today. And uh, now let me introduce our panel. So first we have Aaron. Oh, Aaron, I didn't go over your last name. Is it Rutten? Is that right? Rattan. Rattan. So I get sorry. Rattan all the time, though. I'll answer yeah. to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Look at my first name. I answer to everything. So um, now Erin is the president of Watt Riot Cycling. She, her involvement with and passion for cycling, both locally and nationally, is extensive. She's a former tandem pilot. So if people don't know what that is, that's um, the person at the front of a bike where and the person on the back of the tandem bike is visually impaired. She was with the Canadian National Paracycling Team. She is the current VP of Women's Cycling with the Alberta uh, Bicycle Association, which is uh, the local governing body. The founder and head clinic coach for Watt Riot Cycling, a team focused providing support and development opportunity for women in the cycling community. And former president of the Calgary Bicycle Track League. And that's the group that runs the Calgary Velodrome. Uh, for track cycling. She's also a race official. So um, on my notes, it says, ask Erin anything about bikes. Um, and then also I want to note that uh, she has competed and do currently still compete in road and track uh, as an able-bodied individual and as a tandem, still a tandem pilot in the para category. She coaches development clinics on the road and the track and official for road, track, and cycle cross. So we are truly gonna ask you everything. So welcome, Erin. <laughs> and uh, we have Andrew Lunt, who's the Senior Manager, Sport Development and Bike Park Business at Windsport. Um, as a passionate mountain biker, his ultimate goal is to provide opportunities for all to enjoy the sport of mountain biking and everything it has to offer. He's well-versed in programming and the business opportunities within the bike interest industry. So uh, welcome, Andrew. Okay, let's first, um, let's get to real basics. Um, you know, I've mentioned mountain biking, track, cycling, uh, road biking, tandem. Um, and was it, is it cyclocross also? So um, Aaron, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this to you uh, to start with. Um, you know, when we say biking, and we say cycling, I, I guess the image of what people think of is different. Um, can you break down a little bit um, the differences <laughs> as we talk? Well, okay, that, that's a really, and then we throw BMX in there, right? So we have another, so it's different style of bikes, but is it, I mean, is it something that everybody can do? And, and that's where, you know, people are looking at getting involved in a sport. So, um, that's where I want to sort of start with the basics of some of some biking. Uh, you probably wouldn't go straight to the track cycling, but maybe, or maybe right. see again. <laughs> okay, so you know what? I'm going to let you go with this because again, this is what we want to break down. Is um, you know what is there one that's more popular even, or or what's sort of basic biking? Um, I mean, it's all really turning your legs in a circle. Uh, so Good that's point. what everything has in like mind. <laughs> um, and I like to think about, so different people's comfort level, the tires on the bikes are really different. So some folks, if they're brand new, might not want to ride a bike with really skinny tires. So that kind of eliminates yeah. starting with a road or a track. Um, but I like to tell people to think about where you want to ride. Um, do you want to be riding on the road with traffic? Do you want to be riding on a concrete 
thing in circles? Do you want to be riding on an indoor course with different obstacles and jumping and doing things like that? Then maybe like BMX is for you. Do you want to be out um, in the mountains um, on dirt paths or gravel? Um, or do you want to be in trees? Do you want to be bombing down hills? So think about where in the environment you want to be when you're on a bike and that'll help steer you to what, where to start with biking because really mm -hmm. Um, the different types types of, of cycling are mostly related to where it is that you're riding. And, and then the bikes like, look different depending on where you are. Yeah, but, but you know what? I really like that because that instantly will allow people to figure out what do they want? Do I want to go with my kids along the bike path? And then sometimes along the bike path, um, you know, there might be, I think there are in the city, um, whether it's speed limits or then there's veering off and then there's sort yes. of the gravelly paths as well. So I think that is a perfect way to start and asking people. And so for those who sound, sort of want to get involved, what do you want? Where do you want to go? I love that. Andrew, um, I, I'm going to ask about the mountain biking because, you know, I, I have a road bike and I have a mountain bike. I don't ride in the mountains because <laughs> I was a sprinter, so I can't make it up a big hill. Um, is that probably one of the biggest misconceptions? Like when you say mountain biking, everybody's figuring, okay, well now we have to go straight up Windsport. Now we have to go straight up. Uh, we have to go to Bright Creek. How do you break that down when people say mountain biking versus like a mountain bike? Where, where do you go with that one? Yeah, I think within mountain biking, there's lots of different, there's a bunch of different disciplines from the downhill that you mentioned and, and what Windsport focuses on with its public access. But there's also just general trail or cross country riding. And there's tons of, you know, really good mellow trails in the city at Nose Hill or in the Pascapoo or Fish Creek, where people can really get a bit of a sense of what it's like to ride on dirt and start to build that. Uh, confidence and once you're at the top of a nose hill as an example it's relatively flat just to kind of cruise around on some of that um, some of those single track trails and really feel what it's like to be in that environment so yeah the misconception is you have to go up to the steepest hill and and bomb down or even climb up the steepest hill to get to the steepest hill to come down so lots of different entry points and uh, you know if you're new to mountain biking really starting off local in the city uh, even to really just get your feet underneath you uh, and understand the movement and even lessons can really help with that too. Okay, so let's go um, with that comment about lessons because that's probably one of the biggest things is people are intimidated and I don't care if you're talking kids, adults, whether you're just getting involved in being phys physically active or whether, um, you know, I I'm intimidated by by a lot of stuff with, I will say with mountain biking. Um, and I've been involved in sport all my life. So when you say lessons, is it, what is it like, what are you gonna learn? And um, you know, how does somebody start to look at options? Yeah, so there's tons of options in the city. I mean, there's, there's people with those as Ryan there and, uh, and others around. So depending again on the style that you want to do, whether it's more, maybe indoor BMX or mountain biking. I'm sure there's some road programs kind of out there too, but we offer really a variety of lessons. So you could start with someone that, generally we focus on mountain biking. So we would start with someone that's comfortable on asphalt and then really start to develop them and move them into off-road terrain and develop the fundamentals. So whether you're a, a beginner or an intermediate or an advanced would really determine where we would start. Uh, so we can ensure those fundamentals are built before we send you down a steep hill or, or start climbing up um, a steep hill there. So there's lots of, lots of things. Again, it comes back to Erin's point on what style of riding uh, do you want to partake in? And, and within that, then there's lots of options in the city. There's options out of the city too. And our goal is a safe progression, right? It's not about just taking you up the Moose Road and firing you down. It's about building you to that so everyone can enjoy uh, that safe experience on a bike and, and stick with it uh, versus getting hurt on the first try. Well, and I think, you know, we've been, we really like to focus on sport for life and biking is one of those. So I think what you're saying is exactly getting people 
the, the, the right lessons for what you want to do. Erin, uh, I'm going to throw that same question at you. And again, um, you guys are coming from kind of, you know, a little bit different focuses. And that's what we want because, um, you know, we want people to, to sort of know what's out there. And just so everybody um, who's on this realizes, we will have links in the chat and this entire episode and all the links will be on Sport Calgary's website afterwards. So you can share it with friends and revisit that as well. So sir, sorry, Erin, I'll go back to you with the, uh, with the lessons and, and sort of learning how to start. Yeah, so um, my cycling team, actually we offer and I coach um, women specific road and track uh, development clinics. Um, we typically start those in May. This year was a little bit different because of COVID. Uh, we started a little bit later. So our track clinic, uh, we've actually just had week two um, and we start you off at the very, very basic. So anybody can register for the programs that we run, um, road or track. And we start with like a day of, we talk about the gear. We talk about doing safety checks with your equipment changing flat tires um, and we go into drills from there. So seeing where people are at, looking at bike handling, explaining why this drill is important, um, learning things at low speed before we pick up our, our speed on both sides. Um, the ABA, the Alberta Bicycle Association, um, often has uh, some road clinics for that are geared a little bit more towards racing, but they go through similar skills and drills. It's typically a one day couple hour course. Um, and then for cycle cross, there's a few groups that offer cross training. Um, and again, the clinics, you can do one-on-one -on -one sessions with folks, or you can do um, like a day clinic or a couple hour clinic with a bunch of people. Uh, what is cycle cross? <laughs> yeah. So cycle cross is, is weird. It's like steeplechase on bikes is kind of the best way oh. to explain it. So uh, <laughs> it's mixed terrain sport. Um, you'll go through like meadow land, um, forested areas. Again, we're in Calgary and Alberta. We're not going through a forest typically. Um, and then also paved area on the same course. So you have sort of three different trains, some obstacles that you have to jump over in an actual race. And it's like a zigzaggy <laughs> snaky course. It's really fun to watch because you can typically see most of the course, mm -hmm. um, from the start finish and it's a lapped. Uh, a number of lapped events. So they're really cool. And it's, it's a, it's probably one of the funner scenes to get into with cycling, um, at least in the <laughs> disciplines that I look at, because these people are just there to have a good time. It's the races are in the fall. There's lots of midweek stuff. Um, and it's kind of like a big party on bikes, but yeah, it's very much like steeplechase is kind of the best way to describe it. Um, yeah, so it, it's keeping your eye out for those programs. And most of them will start with like, again, really basic, similar to what Andrew said, um, and see where you're at uh, and then go from there and you can get more advanced. Uh, certainly on the track um, during, again, normal years, we're not quite back to regular programming yet, but we start with these intro clinics. We have the one specifically for women. We have one for kids. Uh, we're looking at adding another potentially in the future for just general. Um, and then we have coach nights for folks that want to advance further on that so um it's lots of lots of different options yeah. to come and learn so on that um you said you've done a couple so if somebody has missed that mm -hmm. and then hearing this information is is interested in that um will you have another can they sign up you do a um so and, and that's why I sort of you know because people are just because we're starting to open up and people are starting yeah. to feel more comfortable and the weather's turning, right? We're all kind of like, okay, what can I do to challenge myself? Yeah. So certainly on the track, um, we will have try the track sessions opening again uh, on Saturday mornings. I believe it'll be from 10 to 12. We haven't hammered that out yet. And so that's open for public to, to drop in. Um, we'll probably, I say drop in, but we might end up having a registration on the website, like let us know you're coming, it's free. Um, you get a basic safety of like, this is the track, we explain it um, and you get to get on the bike and try it out. And again, we'll okay. do some little like handling drills and things like that. Um, typically, again, I speak typically because you don't really know what the <laughs> <laughs> Nobody the knows. <laughs> um, so typically those are, those are every Saturday for most of the summer. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm not totally sure what okay. that'll look like. And then yeah. in terms of road, um, I am looking at doing some weekend stuff if the interest is there. So weekend like road yeah. basics, skills and drills, 
we did a couple Zoom things online with bike maintenance stuff. Um, so we have options for offering that. It's just finding time, time, mm -hmm. the best time. <laughs> okay. That, well, that's but good to know. That, you know and, and, and I say, I like road riding. I'm really, so I'm super basic, um, but I can't change it. I can't change a tire. So I'm in trouble if I, if I'm you stuck. You call so, me, I'll, I'll exactly. teach you. <laughs> but, but so this is what's great is for, for people to know there are options. And then if, if we, you know, we'll have all the website links. Um, Andrew, uh, sort of going on, on, on what Aaron was saying, um, do you, will you have sort of the, the drop in or I, again, you know, and we do put an asterisk beside everything right now with COVID. So I, I know nothing's normal, but we're starting to. So uh, what do you anticipate? And again, for um, adults, kids is a bit of everything. And do you have to sign up and then you're committed for a certain amount of lessons? Yeah, the, uh, the way we do it is, a, is more of a program component. So we have adults and women's and kids evening programs through the summer on top of our day camps. Uh, and they run twice a week for two weeks. So you can sign up for one or two. And we run them. We're running them right now in the spring and we'll run them through the summer and we'll run them in the fall, too. Um, so there's lots of opportunity for for people on tighter schedules or adults to get into to that kind of programming with ourselves okay great um and i'll i'll ask this while i have you on andrew and then i'm gonna ask the same for aaron so what do people need because that's the biggest fear is you know i don't have a good bike and you know do they need shoe do they need clips do they need help what do they need and or what can they rent or be supplied yeah so we offer a rental program so we do have the ability to rent out um We've got full uh, full suspension, hardtail, and some kids' bikes. We've had a bit of an issue with the supply and demand of getting all our rental fleet in. Uh, but we do have those options, and there are other rental options in the city too. But really, I think the, the main piece is uh, the safety component. So having a helmet, having some closed-toe shoes. As far as the bike, you don't need to spend $5,000 on a bike, but I would recommend talking to you know, someone in the industry or a bike shop to look at what it is that's going to set you up for the most success. You know, you, some of the uh, the lower le level bikes that you might get at your your department stores might just not be um, the best to create the positive experience, right? Just based on some of the components, mm -hmm. the weight. Um, but again, you could this year is tricky for sure with bike supply and demand, but um, Definitely a, a, a regular hardtail for mountain biking. A hardtail with uh, you know front fork is really if you get into the sport is is all you need. And that front fork is just the suspension on on the front end of the bike there, so it just makes the ride a little bit uh, less bouncy than a full rigid bike, which in some disciplines uh, they have for sure. Okay, perfect. Aaron, how about you? Uh, what sort of equipment do people need for? track well I'm, I'm guessing most people do not have a track bike but even the roadside as well um yeah so the biggest thing again similar to what andrew's saying is that helmet so make sure you have a helmet pay the money for a good helmet um there's there's a a number of ones that you can get out there that are like 20 30 bucks um they're not going to help you in a crash <laughs> uh ha having had a few concussions myself i can definitely say that a good helmet has saved my brain um, both at high speed and low speed. So um, invest the money, make sure it's fit well to your head, try on different ones. Um, different brands are different shapes. So try on the one that's going to fit the shape of your head best. Uh, try to try a couple, try a couple brands, go to your local bike shop, see what they have. Um, and then in terms of the bike at the Calgary Bicycle Track League, so our local velodrome here, uh, CBTL has a rental, we call it a rental fleet of bikes, but it's actually included in your membership to the track. So it's one of the best deals in town, 150 bucks for the year and includes the use of a bike if you don't have one and coaching in any of the programs. So you can drop into any of the programs that are available in a typical year. Um, so you don't actually need to own a bike for that. Uh, if you are familiar with uh, clipping in to your bike, it's definitely beneficial to have shoes and pedals that you're comfortable with, both on track and on the road. That said, you can you can ride either in sneakers. Um, CBTL has bucket 
pedals, so like just little toe cage things, because you, you can't just use a flat pedal on the track, because uh, there's no bricks, so you need to be able to put a little bit of backward pressure and not have your feet flying off. So, but we do have buckets that you can put on and ride with your runners, and then on the road, I mean, if you, if you don't want to clip in, you don't have to, you'll definitely uh, benefit from doing it, you'll get more power transfer, uh, you'll be a little bit faster with less energy, but you're welcome to ride your road bike in runners, just closed toed shoes for sure. Don't do a flip flop or a sandal. Again, it's really easy to just like skin the skin off the top of your toes and nobody's having a good time if you're doing that. Um, for in terms of rental bikes for the road, uh, you can rent bikes from a shop, but price point wise, uh, I don't know how beneficial it is. I honestly haven't looked into renting a road bike in mm -hmm. some time. I know UFC Outdoor Center also does rentals of a variety of different bikes. So if you wanted to just try it out, that's a good money-wise option, but you might not be having the most fun, kind of similar to what Andrew says. Yeah. Uh, I, can't speak to, I can't speak to the quality of those bikes. Similarly to a department store bikes, maybe you find a diamond in the rough, but um, probably not. Having some yeah. friends that have gotten some lower end <laughs> bikes because that was in their price point they needed a lot more work than for sure you'd want them to have to get them rolling yeah. and having fun. For sure. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, we're actually going to show a video and then, then we're going to come back and I'm going to start, I'm going to ask uh, both of you just about age, um, sort of the age category. So uh, perfect. There were some links in the chat and um, let's watch the video. Hi, my name's Laura and I ride for the Watt Riot cycling team. I've been asked why I joined cycling. I have been cycling since I was very, very young. I was a multi-sport athlete and cycling was always good cross training. Um, after sustaining a few major injuries, cycling was a great way to stay involved in a sport that caused me less pain um, in my lower limbs. So it has that added advantage of being um, low impact, um, but still intense uh, as all the other sports that I had been doing throughout my life. Why do I like cycling? Uh, I like the speed, uh, especially in the velodrome. I really like the speed in, in, uh, on the track and on the road, um, real speed adrenaline junkie. What advice would I give to beginners starting out? I think I would say that the first thing that you should do is just get on a bike. Um, I definitely was, you know, considering all the different disciplines of cycling and try and find the best fit for me. But at the end of the day, I like to do them all. So my beginner advice would just be hop on a bike, a road bike, a recreational bike, a mountain bike, it doesn't matter. Um, just hop on it and, and see where it takes you. Awesome. Uh, so Erin, while I have you up, um, age categories, is there um, sort of sort of the lowest age to start and is is there a max uh so no <laughs> I mean <laughs> if you can fit on a bike you can ride a bike so at the track we have some small like kids small bikes I think the youngest we've had there is we've had some eight-year-olds Okay. Uh, but it really depends on if you're tall enough to fit on our fleet of bikes <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> for that one uh, and then for the road, I mean, I had my four-year-old niece riding road bikes <laughs> uh, oh, wow. a couple of years ago. She's now seven. She was four. <laughs> so I took her out as soon as we got those training wheels off. She was learning how to hand signal. She was learning how to go with the flow of traffic. Uh, while she was still riding slow, I was kind of jogging along beside her. And now I ride a fat bike along beside her. So as far as the lower end of the age limit, you just have to want to get on a bike um, to do it. Mm -hmm. And upper end, I'd say the same thing. You just have to want to get on a bike to do it. Uh, for sure, in our women's programs, we see quite an age range. We've had, uh, no, but not typically anybody under 13 come to the women's specific programs. And then we've had uh, women in their 70s. So, wow. Yeah. Like, I don't care how old you are. If you want to get on a bike, I'll help you get on one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Great. Uh, Andrew, how about you for your programs? Uh, yeah, traditionally we start at four, 
Uh, so we run preschool programs, half day, four days, but with COVID, we've not run them for the last last year and this year. It's something we'll get back into. We definitely saw a huge growth in the couple of years prior to COVID. Uh, but to Aaron's point, there's not really an age. My kids started, I think, at 15 months on a little run by. <laughs> and uh, by the time they were three, you know, they were pedaling on, on little kids' bikes. Again, I think the the evolution of getting kids riding has changed since I was little. So those run bikes are a really good, easy opportunity for kids to learn and develop balance on something that's manageable and then progressing them up into a pedal. And there's lots of lots of really good opportunities in, with kids' bikes out there now. Again, sometimes the department store ones are a little bit heavier and it's about sometimes that experience. You might pay a little bit more and get something a little bit lighter. The components are a little bit easier for them to manage, um, but then they're, they're away. So, I mean, there really is no, no limit to how young – uh, kids can start and they're getting them on those little bikes that they made. And as far as uh, the higher end of the age limit, same thing. And I mean, the e-bike the e world in the mountain bike side has really opened it up to, to, to anyone to start, even regardless of kind of fitness levels. Uh, there are some restrictions in the mountain bike world as to where you can and can't ride them, but it's, it's definitely opening up and it's a fast growing segment of, of that industry. So it's, yeah, I mean, if someone can jump on an e-bike at 80 or you know, even an e-bike that like a more of a cruiser lifestyle one that will get them around the river is, and to enjoy it with grandkids or families, it's, it's, a, it's such a, an open sport that people can get into. Well, I'll tell you what, yesterday evening I went with two of my friends and did the 1A, the bath to, to castle and back and first real long, well, 50K for me is a really long road ride. And I would have liked uh, a little bit of e-bike. <laughs> that, that was tough. Um, you know, it, it's interesting. And you both talk about women's programs and even going out there yesterday, um, a lot more women out on the bikes, um, you know, just even last night than, than, than men. Are you seeing, did you see, um, sort of the lower numbers of women. And so these programs have developed or is it uh, sort of what instigated that? And are you seeing women sort of say, yes, I wanna, I wanna learn this, this skill and how busy are those women's programs? So when I started writing um, more than just for commuting purposes, which wasn't actually all that long ago, it was like seven or eight years ago, I think. Um, there weren't really any women's programs. Uh, I, I found it really challenging to learn as a woman. Um, I joined some local teams and didn't have the sort of encouragement that I was really looking for in some of them. So that's why I started my own team and started focusing on women's programming because historically um, there's not, women are underrepresented in sport, both uh, professionally and in programs that are available. Uh, the number of young girls that drop out of sport is significantly higher than young boys. So mm -hmm. it was passion for me to start building and developing some of these programs. Um, and we've definitely seen an uptick in membership in terms of the ABA for women in the last three years. Uh, my programs sell out. Uh, wow. <laughs> Uh, the great. Rise and Ride, which, yeah, the Rise and Ride Women's World Program, we actually found extra coaches. It, we're, so we're doing it in conjunction with Try It Multisport. Um, and they had such a long wait list that uh, I got more coaches to come to allow more women to join the program. So there's certainly a need for them, I would say. Yeah. Andrew, how about uh, programs that you've seen and that you guys have? Yeah, I think the, there's definitely a growth in women's cycling. Uh, you see it if you're out at Brad Creek or even uh, around Moose, you definitely see more females there now than you did 10 years ago. Um, we do offer women's programs there. I think there's a, there's a lot of, there are a lot of groups that offer women's specific programs in the city that are a little different to ours. So we offer them. Uh, we generally see full groups, but we don't necessarily have the volume to increase the number of groups we have. Um, and I think that the women's programs are really popping up at all levels um, and in all disciplines, really. Uh, so I think it's it's definitely something that's needed. We used to, and, and COVID kind of stopped us a little bit, we had our girls-only day camps too. 
uh, which we're, we're doing really well. We kind of limited the weeks just because, just to try and fill it up a little bit. Uh, COVID and space requirements kind of hooped us a little bit with how many kids we could have. So we had to make some tough decisions there, but we're, our goal is to reincorporate those opportunities to get more young girls into uh, into cycling. And then obviously the, the women's programs we have to really grab that adult market just to expose them, right, to either basic introduction or we have this summer we have a women's uh, downhill camp that runs on a weekend, I think, in July or August. So it's a bit more focused on more advanced riding, intermediate advanced riding, but with the bike park focus. So <clears throat> we're hoping, um, you know, that sells, sells well and we can give that opportunity for that supportive group. And uh, even at the – I was at the BMX track on Monday and there was – it was probably 50% young girls and 50% young boys. So it's, it's really good to see, and I have two girls, so it's good to see more, uh, more girls getting stoked on biking and just into it as a whole. Yeah. yeah and I, you know, I, I agree so much having a, a teenage daughter and, and, and myself being, you know, I'm, I'm intimidated a little bit by <laughs> certain things. So I think that that's great. The more uh, barriers we can break down and allow females to go and explore another sport. Uh, I think that's wonderful. Um, there are some links. Uh, Sandra from Sport Calgary, thank you for putting Erin's women's program on there. And again, just in case people didn't hear this at the beginning, this is being recorded. All the links and the entire recording will be on Sport Calgary's website. Uh, just before we uh, go to another video, and then I want to talk um, on adapted programs uh, from Aaron and Andrew. I know that uh, Ryan from Beeline, uh, who's a member of Sport Calgary, um, you know, has been uh, ha has been great with the programs. Has been putting some stuff in the chat and. Uh, has here ladies night or Tuesdays at Beeline. So again, on, um, on one of uh, Calgary's members, uh, check it out. And there are lots of kids programs there as, as well. So um, there's lots of options around the city. I know we've talked pathways, we've talked in the indoor bike park, Beeline, we've talked pump tracks, we've talked wind sport, uh, the track and uh, road, all these different programs. Let's show a quick video and um, then we're gonna talk adapted programs. So my advice for any beginners or people that are looking to get into track cycling is first off, if you have the interest or kind of sitting on the fence of if you wanna give it a go or not, absolutely do it. The CBTL, the Calgary Bicycle Track League, uh, offers so many different introductory programs to get you rolling. Um, we try to make that first kind of contact as accessible as possible. There's rental bikes, coaches, everything you need to get started. I, for instance, did the women's program uh, pretty early on in my track cycling journey, and it was a fantastic way to not only um, gain confidence on the track, but also be introduced and meet some of the fantastic people in the track cycling community here in Calgary. Uh, second, I think fear is a big element of an obstacle that people need to overcome in riding the track. I had fear when I first started and I know many people do. When you first come to the velodrome, it can be a really intimidating experience of wondering how you're actually gonna ride um, on the velodrome, but all of our programs are designed to progress you in a very safe way and progress you at a level that you are comfortable with. Um, so I highly encourage you to kind of face that little bit of fear and just give it a go. It's something that you'll never know what that experience is like until you do it for yourself. Um, and finally, uh, my advice to beginners is track cycling has so many different opportunities and you can make it exactly how you want it to be and how you want it to fit into your life. Whether you know, you're know you a youth or a master's athlete, um, there's opportunities for you, whether you want to you know, just come out on a weekday night to get an easy workout in, in the city limits, somewhere without traffic, or you have ambitions to you know, win some races and you know, even race internationally. There's opportunities for everyone and you can make track cycling as little or as big as you want it to be for yourself. There's so many different events you can be involved in. You can do sprint, you can do endurance. There's really something for everyone. Awesome, I love, you know, it's, it's about building confidence. And again, whether people are wanting to talk about uh, drive for themselves and uh, getting into racing or building the confidence and just having um, a sport for life, and that is super important. Um, also, just from that video, it makes me uh, 
reminds me that this summer we're going to have the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics. So for people to be able to watch and, and yes, they are going to happen, <laughs> um, to be able to watch all the disciplines of the cycling at the highest level. This will be a perfect opportunity for people to be able to witness, you know, um, and, and some kids will get inspired from watching that. So I, I, I'm just so excited uh, for, for both the Olympics and the Paralympics. Um, so let's talk about that. And Erin, I'm going to start with you because you um, have been and currently still uh, participate um, in the tandem biking. So if there are families um, with anybody with a disability, uh, what programs and what options are there um, for, for families? Because you know we've, we've started the Calgary Adapted Hub uh, powered by Jumpstart and a lot of partners. And you know we're really trying to connect our community um, who especially with COVID feel isolated, but especially if they have a child or anybody in the family with a disability, it is much harder to break down those barriers. Yeah, so um, it's still it's still quite challenging. Um, I'm not going to lie. Uh, the Alberta Bicycle Association we have um, so a, a para team and a, a head coach that will work with para athletes that are entering the sport. So depending on what adaptive needs they have for their bike, uh, there's different things that they're able to do some bikes can't go on the velodrome because of the banking so uh, we don't have hand bikes on the velodrome uh, but tandems can go on the velodrome any of our c-class adaptive athletes so folks on what looks like a regular bike with adaption or fits for their needs um, those are can ride and race on the velodrome just fine um, and a lot of our race organizers have started offering para categories in their road race uh, time trials and sometimes their criterion. So looking at that, that's not helping you learn though. That's just helping you kind of get into the sport. Um, there's a, a group out in Canmore run by Susie, whose last name is leaving my brain right now, um, but I can send a link that we can post up. Um, and she she's a hand cyclist uh, who actually competes uh, for European uh, country, but she she lives here in, in Canada, in Canmore. Okay. Great. Um, she works with folks of all ages. Um, she's got a, a fleet of hand bikes of different sizes that uh, people can come and ride if they want to try cycling and that's what they need. Um, and then uh, there's some tandem still floating around, um, but contacting the, the ABA, they can help put you in contact uh, with groups that might have have some yeah. tandems around if, if that's what okay that's great and Karen uh, with the adapted hub just put some links in in the chat as well so uh, that's great thank you and um, Andrew I'm not sure if uh, if you guys have any programs or if you can touch on that I, I, I'm not sure with wind sport yeah we don't have any adaptive programs as such and I think Karen puts in some good notes there I was going to bring up the bowhead cork who are uh, uh, I don't know how long they've been around now, but they've got a lot of cool content on there for more uh, ha uh, adaptive bikes. It's a motorized style bike, and it has been on on some bike parks. We, I've just been having a conversation with them recently too. So there's a lot going on out there. Um, we tend to look at our programs as being a bit more inclusive on maybe the cognitive side of things. So we'll really work with people uh, from those. Um, uh, within with those challenges and whether that's a private lesson or whether we can integrate them into the day camp we do offer some um, relatively basic kind of inclusion component uh, with some of our staff more so working with those individuals and how to incorporate them uh, don't yeah we, we've not jumped into the world of full on adaptive biking it's a uh, can be a little bit more challenging on the on the bike park with access to the top and and those kind of things so mm -hmm. But that's great. And so, I mean, I think if there are families uh, who have members of the family or, or friends who have a disability, um, I think getting a hold of some of the organizations of the links that we have, um, intellectual disability, uh, Andrew, maybe they can reach directly out to Windsport. And again, um, I think it's, there are options. 
And, um, you know, what I want everybody to understand is that, um, you know, Andrew's programs and everything he deals with and Aaron's programs and everybody she deals with and, uh, you know, through Sport Calgary, we can help connect people because we want them to explore and discover the incredible sport of, of cycling and biking. And again, we talk about it being a sport for life. So uh, we have um, links uh, for the uh, Ultimate Parasports Association on the chat. So um, any last words? Uh, I'm cognizant of time. We don't want to take up everybody's lunch hour, but uh, Andrew, you're on my screen. Any last words of advice uh, for for uh, the group on this panel or on this uh, webinar? Yeah, I mean, try cycling. Uh, like Erin said, go where your comfort level is. Be prepared. Don't think if you buy a mountain bike, you're going to head out to Brad Creek right away or to the bike park. Uh, you know, just be aware there's risk to cycling. So be prepared to go where you go and, you know, whether that's the right equipment, lessons, whether that's just simply knowing how to change a tube, like it's been mentioned a few times. You see a lot of new people in West Bragg now with very limited supplies and should they actually get a flat tire, they're not necessarily capable. So just make sure you've got the right pieces of equipment uh, and that you're working within your confidence and skill set. Don't feel you need to go hit the jump line if you're not really uh, confident on the green trails and the more the single track within the city or uh, easy trails within Brad Creek. But get out and try it. I mean, it, it brings your family together. It brings new friends. There's a massive social scene within the bike world, whether you're at Beeline or hanging out at Station Flats. There's, there's always people there to talk to, and uh, it's a really good environment to be part of. Awesome. Thank you. Aaron? Yeah. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just, yeah, get on a bike. Um, mm -hmm. See what's available at your local shop. Talk to them. Uh, the shops are great resources. If you tell them the kind of thing you want to get on, they'll help you get on it. Um, and don't be afraid to, to reach out to the Alberta Bicycle Association with questions or any of the um, the club presidents from whatever discipline you're looking at, shoot them an email. Most of us are really responsive. Um, we're also busy, so it might take a bit, but we will get back to you. Uh, we promise we'll get back to you. Um, yeah, and awesome. just get out and ride, see what you love. And uh, my colleagues have put up some links about cycling on city streets, pathways. Um, all the links uh, that Aaron and Andrew have talked about um, will be on this. This will be on Sport Calgary's website. And I know some of the questions that people sent in were, again, where can you bike? I was just in a, a bike store the other day and they had a, a free pamphlet. So, um, you know, go ask ask, 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 uh, reach out to us, reach out to, you know, all the organizations um, that are linked on this. Um, Aaron, Andrew, thank you so much, because I think, you know, the, the, the biggest thing from this is to sort of get through a bit of the confusion, because it is such a big, you know, cycling, biking, it's, it, it, it comprises a lot of different things um, and, and building confidence because that's what we want people to do. We want people to be active. Um, we're finally able to be a little bit more social. So uh, that's a great thing. And really to discover a sport that's a sport for life. So thank you, Erin. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, again, this will all be on our website and um, yeah, we look forward to uh, continuing to uh, host these. There will be all of our previous faces of Calgary Sport are on our website. Uh, keep your fingers crossed because we sure hope to have our all sport events in person in the fall where you can try all, I know, try all these different sports, like a hundred of them, and, uh, and find something for you, whether you're a child, teen, uh, Oh, I'll say middle-aged adult or an old adult, whatever it is, something for everybody. So enjoy the rest of the day, everybody. Stay safe. Thank you so much.